This is Campbell for Game. You get podcast top five of the year special number dos. Dos. Yeah, is that, that, that's, is, that's is, Spanish. Yeah. Look, no dos. I, I won't extend my fluent Spanish any further. Como esta? We're doing the top five decks of 2020. So we had a few. Uh, we, had a, we had a pretty good range of decks this year, I reckon. It's a lot of different decks. But no real way to showcase them, so... Yeah, that's the problem, is that we don't have a good... I still think, you know, start of the year, end of Trinity format or whatever. Well, not Trinity format. Uh, what's it called? Eternal format? Yeah. End of that, you know, up until January and then a bit later than that as well. That still holds some weight in the year standings, in my opinion. Yeah. Because it's the last real event, isn't it? Besides mm. Coles Regionals. <laughs> Oh Shout God. out to MacArthur. Um, and there was... Oh, and we had a, also had a master rule change this year as well that we ha- didn't really cover in the card ones, which, I mean, a mi- didn't really have an immediate effect because they limited cards like Toad and ABC. For no reason. To kind of avoid them spamming it, but even then, probably not. It's only like, I mean, they've been bought back now. Um, actually, well, they're not on the list, but uh, Zodiac is probably the only one that really benefits from the master rule thing. Oh, I mean, all right, yeah. oh, sorry. There's actually other decks on this that do benefit from Master Rule change, but at the moment that like the point is the only thing that became relevant again because yes. of the Master Rule change. Yes. yes, that's what I meant to um, get to. But yeah, even then, you know, Zodiac is it's it, it's been doing well. I yeah. guess it's been doing well, doing well, but not well enough to be number five because number five is Megalith. Hey, so there's it's a pretty top heavy um uh, votes again for the best two in this while the rest is kind of like were random votes thrown around and uh megalith was actually tied with vw virtual world (laughs) Uh, enough but but the tiebreak is dominant in their formats (laughs) (laughs) i mean of yeah uh, amongst people who played them yeah virtual world is Dominating right now. Yeah. Like, Drytron's out, and it still doesn't really beat Virtual World. Yeah. I'm wondering if, depending on how long the text didn't hit VFD, if we'll be talking about Virtual World next year. I think so. Because I think it is. It was just a, like they came out just a little bit too late. Yeah. And also, and then the ban list kind of pushed them to the forefront yeah. a month ago. Well, they, they were good before that. No one really knew how to play them, and then people realized that they could just... Make VFD through almost anything. Yeah. And because, like, I'm sure you heard about it at the start, too, where it was like, oh, one Ash, one Nibiru, that kills them. But it just doesn't. Yeah. It just doesn't. Just doesn't. And also, they have to draw that. And it's just that, oh, what do you yeah, do exactly. if you get hand trapped? It's like, I don't know. What every other deck does when it gets hand trapped. Yeah, yeah. It's like, everyone's under the same amount of pressure there. It's just, if you don't, and even if you do sometimes, ending on a a turn skip VFD is infinitely stronger than anything on Megabot. So, I mean, that's our number six. N- number five with Megalith. <laughs> <laughs> Megalith had the... Oh, this, oh, maybe they... I reckon Megalith had the second best end board in the entire game that was possible in this year of Yu-Gi-Oh. And they did it through four hand traps. Like, yeah. that deck was nuts. But it didn't really get its time in the sun. Yeah, that no, block dragon, block dragon yeah, got hit immediately. That, yeah, that block dragon hit, and despite uh, despite all rumors to the contrary, spread by one YCS topping player saying it doesn't it doesn't need block dragon, they have done nothing since. He messaged me. <laughs> he messaged me a month ago and was like, "Without block dragon, I'm going to make Megalith FDK." Still waiting, Josh. <laughs> Still waiting. Where it at? <laughs> Number four, Eldritch. Eldritch. Interesting. Ah, uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, I think this is... It's a mid-range deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. How about that? That Synchro variant Oh, was, yeah. Yeah, like, I think this is only up here because of the Synchro version. Like, there's... There a couple people just went all variants, but I don't think Zexal made a splash. We probably could have... We should have talked about that in the card uh, episode where that's, not, like, another deck that was hyped that... I mean, it did okay for two weeks, and then... I don't understand what the problem is with Zexal over VFD. Yeah, why? I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. 
the the thing is, you can open more things in Virtual World to get to VFD than you can open in Numeron. But like falling back on if you Elvish open the, is still pretty good. If you open spare combo pieces for in Virtual World, what happens? Like so, because if you draw extra Zexal stuff, they're le- they're legitimate bricks. Yeah. I mean, are they not sometimes. in Virtual World? Not really. It's just an extender. Like yeah, the, so the, the deck, yeah. The deck has like one starter. That's it. And yep. it barely has that. Like every card in Virtual World is an extender. Yeah. Essentially. Like Lao Lao is incredible. But... Uh, and yeah, so for El Lich, it was very yeah. similar. Like, I mean, yeah, tuning. Which is weird because like quick. it's at fourth, right? And. I'm not even sure I agree on it being fourth, if I'm being honest, because like I just think it's a it's a very mid range deck that's not all that powerful in engine, like in itself. Yeah. The deck the deck's great. It's fine. It's it's meta worthy, but I I think it's been consistently the fourth best deck year round. It's like since release. Yeah. Um obviously you've got the Synchro engine, which was just Jet Synchron that you could put in any deck. Yeah. That didn't need a normal summon. You've got, um, you know, the Numeron bit, which I thought worked really well for it. Yeah. Um, because even if you bricked, you just fell back on four traps, and that worked pretty well. Um, but the problem was the deck itself just isn't no, it, up there. It, yeah, it all, I mean, yeah, and that's why it, like... When I wrote when I wrote my entry for this, because I voted for this, I voted like I voted Synchro El Lich. That version yeah. of that deck, that was three to four months yeah. in LCS toppings and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. For was, sure. And was trading places with a deck that is also on the list. What's the thing? Is that for me, Eldritch is kind of like when people look back on this year, I think Eldritch will be a deck that is remembered for this year. Yeah. Like Admantipator Maybe it might also just be forgotten a little bit because it left, but Eldritch is going to stick around for a while. It's going to be like a sort of true Draco thing. Yeah. And people will remember it starting now. And number three, Infernoble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Used, used the Synchro engine, that jet, like it was using jet and... It was using jet. Yeah, very well. Um, and then the thing is, once jet left, it just shifted. Yeah. It was like, I don't care. Ban Jet. Ban O-Lion. I don't care. Yeah. We moved. I played Infernoble a lot this year, as viewers may know. Or any listeners of the podcast would know, but just general viewers of the channel might not. I played Infernoble a lot this year, and I played it in a saucy way. I played pure hand rip. Because, in my opinion, one hand rip and hand knowledge is always worth more than one negate. That's just the way I view the game. Also, you preemptively... But, I mean, it, you're going second stuff. Like, mm. if you had to go second, you had to make different... You had to adapt to that, right? Exactly. You had to adapt through... Neg- well, see, the thing was, it's like... People think combo decks can't go second. But when a combo deck is going first, because of the way Yu-Gi-Oh! is now... You already have to play through two or three negates. Mm. Going second, the negates are just have attack value. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people think about it like that, though. Yeah. About this whole, like, you know, like attack value thing. But um, I think it's just a another way of thinking about it. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's how I looked at it. What the fuck does this tangent have to do with Infernoble? <laughs> Going second... <laughs> Yes, there we go. So, the deck... People thought, yeah, going second just didn't work, but it did. Yeah. It was fine. And, and like, obviously, it's not got the power of, like... They pretty much had... Let's say... Three months... Like, they had three months in the sun as well. Yeah. I also don't think they're entirely dead yet. No. I think there's life in them yet. They can, they can still turbo out VFD, and they have Oliver, which means they can make VFD through Nibiru. And Nibiru's fallen out of favour anyway, so... And a cute thing they did was digging up an old, an old smoke grenade. Yeah, an old spell card and getting a ban. I, I like decks that do that, where it's just like, hey, old support that no one ever thought about. Well, a few go decks thought about. I think it. Konami knew what they were doing. Yeah, they knew smoke. 
They want the smoke. Yeah. Ain't nobody want the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> on to number two. Uh, it's actually, it's pretty close between number one and number two, but number two is Dragon Link. Mm. Now, in my opinion, it should be number one, but we'll, I'll go into that Ooh. after it. But uh, really good, really resilient, and was here for most of the year. Obviously, when uh, the number one deck and Eldritch were trading wins for a few months, they mm. dropped a little bit out of favor, but you still couldn't sleep on them. And then they came back with uh, a vengeance. Well, you see, the thing about Dragon Link is this deck has existed for the entirety of Yu Gi Oh! Yeah. It just shifts. There's so much generic dragon support. It's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, this deck has done just consistently well. And it's I, doing so well that now people starting to do like do stuff in Dragon Maid in the OCG, so it's going to turn up. Dragon Maid's the best deck in the OCG. Yeah. It's Dragon Maid in Virtual World. Um, my, my two year ago prophecy is... <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it now, Jake saying... Maybe it's a year. Jake saying, as soon as you said, in the battle phase, and Jake going, don't even read it. <laughs> um, but yeah, Dragon Link is just uh, an incredibly powerful deck. But even before it was sort of played, look at what Logan did at yeah. YCS. That was Dragon Link. Yeah, true. We, we, we called it three axis yeah, yeah, yeah. dragons. But that was Dragon Link before Dragon Link. Essentially, before... What people played now. Yeah. Honest to God, Logan should make a claim to that. Yeah, but before he'd been playing that for like three bloody years. Yeah, exactly. Um, he went undefeated day one at yeah. YCS and then dropped, I think, right? Yeah, yeah dropped to play To play cricket. cricket. But yeah, he probably could have been in with a chance of like winning that YCS, to be fair. He, yeah. it, that deck was so broken because he lost most of his die rolls. So yeah, Dragon Link, incredible deck. Boy, am I glad that uh, Buster is banned. Yeah. That yeah. card was not I, a fair interaction. And yeah, and it's, I never liked... I never, like, and that's it, I didn't run that just out of principle. I always went the other way. Like, not, not even like from some high standard. It's just, it wasn't... It seemed very susceptible to, to me. Mm-hmm. And you had to run Union Carrier, and I never really wanted to. Yeah, well, that's what it is. I spoke spoke to Kyra about it, and she runs Dragon Link, and she said, I think, because I asked her about the bands, and she said, I think we just play the better version of the deck now. Yeah, it's it's, it's always like, I feel like it could do so much more, but Buster was such a... Like, you need to get the Buster. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. And I mean, there's so many other things you can do with two monsters on the field, but here we go. Actually, yeah, I totally forgot... Yeah, Union Carrier, Verte, we didn't talk about them yesterday in the cards and such in the Honourable Mentions. So there's some Honourable Mentions for yesterday's ones and some Honourable Mentions for this episode. Uh, so, Spiral. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we, yeah. we definitely talked about that yesterday as well. Um, that. It's two and a half months. It was, like, nearly the best deck. It's just tier zero again. Yeah. I mean, Dragon Link did take a few wins off it, but... Sure, but yes. What do you do? You just... You go second against draw, Spiral. Yeah. Hope you draw s- Droll, and if you don't, you lose. Uh, invoked, uh, invoked uh, Dogmatical, uh, missed the cut. They were pretty good. Uh, Shadol invoked as well. Um, yeah, they de- like they split their mm. their votes. The certain players that have a hard on for that Fusion Boy. So sucks yeah. to them. Yeah. And uh, Dinos didn't. Dinos only got a couple votes, <laughs> despite also being good. Oh yeah, Dinos. I, I feel like Dinos probably should be. If this was a top ten list, they they'll definitely be in there. Yeah, for sure. But top five does uh, limit it down a lot. So number one, as you mentioned earlier, Adamant's a pet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adamant's a pet. Yeah, uh, combo like crazy. It was around for a bit. Whether or not we forget about them or not, but in, in future, but uh, a lot of the voters on this one. They didn't forget about it. Well, I think that the... I'm not sure this would be on the list if you asked all Yu-Gi-Oh players. I'm not sure it would make no. it. The reason it's on the list is because so many people at our locals played Admancipator. Yeah. Like, even Ben played, like, Admancipator FTK. Like, it just... I think we had a biased 
towards Emancipated because a lot of people who were coming in, this was their first major combo deck. Yeah. Like uh, Jasper, for example. This was like him getting into combo. And yeah, and and a lot of this was online, so for whatever that's worth. But I was going to say like a price point, but like a researcher? Researcher was... She was never that expensive. 70. Yeah, like that's... And that's... That's pretty much... It was researcher and borrow load. You need borrow load. Oh yeah, and then also Hulk. That's why borrow load was really expensive this year, wasn't it? And now it's just like oh. one hundred and twenty bucks. Yeah, this year. Ah uh, well. Um. So yeah, that's the that's the top five decks. Yeah. Um. So I mean, as, as we mentioned, I'm pretty sure we see virtual War carrying over to next year. Uh, if don't. we move up a few places and then die. Uh, and yeah, we'll see what happens with Dragon Maid and the OC. Well, this thing, like, this, also, our, I feel our results were very different in the OCG this year with top decks. Yeah. And so that the card pool splitting and different ban lists and stuff, it's getting harder and harder to read future metas based off OCG stuff. Yeah. Because there's such a divide now. Yeah. Such a dichotomy. Do you reckon mutants make a splash next year? Oh, what did I see? I saw a cute mutant build. Uh, the problem is, and Andrew and I have played around with mutants, they're so slow. Hmm. But also, once they get to their good thing, it's not that good. Yeah. It's, oh, no, it's, they are, they, I don't think using any of their bosses and stuff is probably the way to go there. There's probably some fucky little engine that they can do that, like, brings up a car, an XYZ monster from 2013 or whatever. Yeah, I, that's, that's how I see them going. Otherwise, uh, thanks for joining me, Lachlan. Uh, join us tomorrow for the top five uh, products. Uh, probably going to be with Ben. Probably, yeah. in theory. Uh, what, did you, what was your top five decks of the year? Uh, go to our Discord. Hit us up in the video discussions channel uh, with your votes. Or in the comments below. Either or. It's um, be very much appreciated. Because we'll do a, then a proper end of year wrap up. Talk about your guys' decisions. And uh, call out each other's decisions. Yeah. Until then, thank you very much. Well done.